This is the uh, 1957 uh, Council, San Diego Council Divers of Divers uh, competition uh, showing some of the fish that were brought in at the weigh-in. And uh, what you did was you went out for four hours, you speared fish, and then you came in to have them weighed and uh, to find out who won. You had a three-man team and all the aggregates were put together, but also individual aggregates were counted uh, in the Pacific Coast Championship with, uh, their, with his team. And this is Bob Manneke, Terry Lentz, and Bob Weaver who won the Pacific Coast Championship. Uh, second place team was uh, Del Wren, uh, Dick Jaffe, and Frank Hopps. And uh, the individual trophies were Bobby Weaver, Terry Lentz, and Del Wren. That's for the largest aggregate of fish. We, uh, we used paddle boards. We did a lot of our, most of our fishing from the beach. And uh, this is the, the preparation before a Pacific Coast Championship meet were represented by all the councils from San Diego all the way up in Oregon and uh, Washington and uh, Northern California. This is Vern Van Fleet going out on his paddleboard, all his spear guns, ready to engage. Now what they did was they just got in the water and uh, paddle around a little bit, wait for the gun to go off, and they went wherever they wanted to go for four hours. Terry Lentz is preparing. <clears throat> all his equipment's on the board, and uh, he has his uh, board bearer there, Don Bates, to bring his equipment to the water, and away he goes. Gone for four hours. We, we had, uh, this is a, a diver uh, down. As you'll note, we carried the fish around our waist because we didn't want to go back to our boards all the time. Spear the fish, bring it up, hook it on your belt, and uh, continue on to the next fish. The uh, diver, has this, this particular diver looks like he's carrying about 10 fish. So you carried maybe 50, 60 pounds of fish with you and then you put it on your board and uh, grab a new stringer and away you went. And this is one of the uh, greatest guys that uh, ever dove. It was Charlie Sturgill and Laura Sturgill. And here you can see represented uh, are the various councils from all over California, West Coast. Trophies, everybody was striving to get a trophy. This is the, the end, at the end of the meet, uh, trophies are given away. This is the first place team with Terry Lentz, uh, Steve Brelo, and uh, some of the various divers. Uh, Moss out of Harrow down there got the, some, a lot of the, got the biggest fish. Teams from San Diego, the women's team from San Diego. Uh, this is a, <clears throat> now we're looking at the uh, competition, the world competition held in 1963 in uh, Rio de Janeiro. John Ernst was on the team. Uh, Gary Kepler was on the team from Washington. Dale Dean from Washington. We had a, uh, a real cross-section of fine divers. And we also had Mike Wilkie from uh, California. He was a uh, swimming champion at USC. Prior to any meet that you go into, you gotta go out and look over the area. You gotta scout the area. You gotta know where the fish are. So we did this for about two weeks prior to the meet. Just went out and scouted and looked and had a, all work. Just, uh, there's the whole team getting ready to go. The fish down there were similar to a California fish. Uh, we wore the same equipment. We had our rubber suits, uh, the same spear guns. With, uh, we used rubber-powered uh, spear guns. But a lot of the teams from the various countries, they used uh, spring-loaded guns and uh, CO2s. A lot of surge there. You can see the uh, surge. And that's where the, a lot of the big fish were. They were in the caves. You go down and uh, had to dig them out with lights. Here's one of the divers diving. <clears throat> Always looking. Some game fish were prevalent in the area. 
A diver hooks up with a fish there, and uh, pretty lively. If you know it, some of the spear guns had reels on them. If you got a big fish, you might have to pull your reel and let out a couple hundred yards of line. So we had lights. Every diver carried a light, so you can go in the deep caves and, and fish away. You, know, you got to recognize, too, that you're always out of your element. You're holding your breath. So if you dove 80 feet, you had to have the time to get back up. If you went 100 feet, you still had to have the time to get back up. And if you're a well-trained diver, you could, uh, you're trained to overcome your, your safety factors. Here's the divers. They're having every day they took vitamins, all kinds of vitamins, desiccated liver, amino acids. Uh, cod liver, everything. There's some of the practice runs where some divers shot some small sharks. And uh, Dorado, they were delicious eating fish. So here's the whole team together in Rio de Janeiro. Getting ready, nervous for the start of the competition. We have uh, we had uh, like 23 countries, Spain, Italy, uh, Yugoslavia, just uh, all of the uh, South American countries were there. John Ernst there had uh, dysentery three, three really bad, three days prior to the meet. So Dale Dean and uh, Gary Keffer, everybody's getting ready to go. Each man had his own boat, and each uh, so he would uh, get off the main boat, jump in the, his little boat, and, uh, and take all his equipment, and they would go and spear fish. And then the main boat would come if they wanted to move. We'd hook them up and, and tow them on into whatever area that we had previously scouted. Uh, there's John getting off. There goes uh, Gary Kepler. Everybody's got a flashlight in their hand. We were fortunate that uh, G Gary Keffer was a very uh, well acclimated to these waters because that's what he dove in in Seattle. And just about the same fish, about the same everything. And uh, so we would, uh, he came in second in the world. Lots of fish were similar. There's Gary Kepler, did a great job talking about the one that got away, John Ernst, age 20. And we found a couple wounded birds out there, so we brought them on wind with us to, for, to see if we could help them. This is the, uh, the club at the end of uh, Copacabana Beach where the weigh-ins were held. And you had uh, very in, it was very intense because uh, not a lot of fish were taken. If you can see the points there, Gary Kepler, he's uh, number nine. He got 34,000 points, which put him in second place in the world. Bruno Hermini from uh, Argentina, I mean from Brazil, won the meet. Some, some sizable fish taken. They had judges from uh, all the various countries to be there to see that uh, that the fish were weighed accurately. Now this is a meet in Florida. Uh, there the water was warm, you didn't need the suit. Uh, they, most of the uh, divers from Florida were using Hawaiian slings, which is a very, very special way of uh, spearing fish. Little basking shark entered the area. Just a great time. Warm water. You can see that uh, of the variety of species of fish in Florida uh, were many. And uh, it was a, we speared, oh, probably two or three thousand pounds practicing for the first couple of weeks so that we could. Uh, Here's a shark coming up so that we could uh, give them to the orphanages. We gave all our fish to the orphanages in Florida. There's about a six-foot cuda bear. 
quite dangerous. And here's Terry Lentz again, one of our better known divers from the United States. There's uh, Paul Damon coming up with uh, about a 30 pound grouper. Here's uh, Don Monaco, excellent diver from Florida, spearing fish along with his other team members. What they would do is, uh, with the Hawaiian sling, they would, they would shoot. If they, if they uh, got a fish, sometimes they'd let them run. And sometimes the guy was down too long, so he'd need a little help. And this is where the team effort really came in. And the diver would come down, grab the fish, and the guy would go onto the surface. Uh, there's Don Monaco or Ter Terry Lentz, I think. Yeah, it's Terry Lentz spearing about a 30-pound grouper. You can see it's quite deep. We're diving about 60 to 80 feet. Here's Art Pinder. He's one of the world-renowned divers. Uh, he's so strong and so it's such a, a competitor that uh, there's about a 400-pound black sea bass that we came upon. We got a shaft into it, but we didn't land it. Sharks were prevalent. They're all over the area. Diving in Florida is just, it's, it's just great. Lots of sharks, but uh, they didn't bother you too much. We only were chased out of the water once. Now, these are the rubber-powered guns. You can see how uh, the, uh, the shaft, you just aim and pull the trigger. After our practice, we took all the fish, threw them in the hold, and uh, gave them to the orphanages in uh, Miami, Florida. Art Pinder. Eugene Shin. These are these are all great divers uh, out of the past. This is the uh, 1959 team that went to the World Championship in Malta. Uh, there's Del Wren, uh, Paul Damon, Donald Monaco. The coach was uh, Jim Christensen and uh, Terry Lentz. And we went, as usual, we went out and scouted the area. Uh, it, those cliffs you see in the background, the, uh, it just goes straight down to about 60 feet. And then it breaks off another ledge to about 80 and then on down to 100. So we were diving well over 100 feet. This is the, the cardinal of the island of Malta, the head of the church. And uh, the parade prior to the competition. All teams represented. I think we had 32 teams in the meet from Yugoslavia. You can. Uh, Spain, uh, Estados Unidos, Greece, just all, every team. That's uh, yours truly there in the crutches. Poland, Monaco, Portugal, uh, every, every country was represented. Some fine divers. France, This was the uh, palace uh, on Malta, the Palacio, where the governor lived. And we had, uh, along with us, with Gustav Del Valle and this big Jim Christensen, we're all launching our boats. Paul Damon, Terry Lentz. This was to be a great day for Terry Lentz. Just one great day. All divers, all countries had, uh, were going out and uh, every diver had his own boat with one official in it, official and a rower. And the official uh, had uh, flares. If the diver was down over three minutes, they would fire the flare to get the scuba divers in to see if they could find them. Unfortunately, during this meet, we lost two divers. We lost Jules Corman, 
and uh, Joseph from Yugoslavia. Jules Corman was the 1958 World Championship from France. And uh, slight of build, there's Jules Corman right there. This is the last picture ever taken of him. Very, very good diver. But he, he went on to the great beyond doing what he loved to do, spear fish. So, and then Joseph from Yugoslavia, they didn't find him for two days. So here's the way it was. The big boat lined up and uh, pulled its three small boats along behind the individual boats. Here's one that sank uh, in tow. It just couldn't take the, uh, the bow waves from some of the bigger boats and it sank. So the diver went and got his number and uh, he's going to put it up on an extra boat that they have available for emergencies such as this. <clears throat> then you start diving. Now this diver is right up against the cliff and uh, you'll see as he dies he's got a line to, uh, tied to his boat and uh, down he goes. If he's, uh, he's negatively weighted so that when he, he doesn't have to swim he gets breaks over and the, and the weights just take him on down. And he's used this uh, diver is from Italy and he's using his a spring gun. Just kind of guides in on the fish. Very clear water, and the uh, the fish didn't start in Malta until you got to about 80 feet. We didn't use this particular method in the United States. What we do is we take our gun up and down with us. We had no lines to the surface, but they, they kind of like this idea here where they can let go of the gun, uh, swim to the surface, and then they pull their fish up behind them. Deep diving in Malta. That's why we lost two divers. See, it's a long way to the surface. Conditioning. Uh, these 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 athletes are they're well trained. They uh, they trained for years to get down to 60 feet, and they were trained a couple more years to get down to 80 feet, and pretty soon they're they're world class divers. The average dive, I guess, for an average diver is probably 45 seconds to a minute. We were diving three and a, three minutes to three and a half minutes. I made one four-minute dive during the uh, World Championship. And then when it's all over, you take your fish and you take them to the weigh-in and hope you have enough to, uh, to win. They had judges from uh, all over the world. Uh, they count each fish, they weigh each fish, and uh, we got some, uh, these uh, over there, the grouper are called chernia. We got some, and these fish were also donated to the uh, convent. This is Genusi from Italy, that's a nice fish. Don Monaco from Florida, excellent diver. Terry Lentz. Not only did Terry Lentz have the biggest fish, he had the most fish. And when they started piling Terry's fish on the scale, people were ooing and aahing because the, the kilos just kept mounting up. Couldn't believe what he did. He's the first diver from the United States ever to win the World Championship. Since 1959 to the, today, he's the only one that has ever done it, accomplished this feat. There's the team afterwards, kind of celebrating. We came in third overall as a team. And there's Terry Lentz with his World Championship trophy. <laughs> Great guys. Big Jim Christensen, Don Monaco, Paul Damon, and yours truly, Del Rand. You can see the flags are at half mast. That's for our comrades who went along into the great beyond 
for what they love doing best, spearing underwater spear fishing. How, how many spearfishing championships did you compete in during your uh, career as a, as a free diver? Well, I, I competed in uh, uh, three national championships, uh, four world championships, uh, probably hundreds and hundreds of lesser championships, probably four, five, six uh, Pacific Coast championships, just uh, many, many different championships. All these championships and all these spearfishing meets uh, took place uh, as a uh, breath-holding diver. In other words, you had to hold your breath during all the, all the spearing of fish. You couldn't use scoop. Is that correct? That's correct. We were uh, what was uh, known at that time as free divers. And uh, as a free diver, you just pumped, hyperventilated, took all the air you could down with you because that's all you had. And, you had, and when the oxygen supply was used up in that particular air, then you had to come up and replenish your oxygen supply by hyperventilating again and making another dive. I can remember one time, I, uh, a little insight, I, uh, was a scuba diver challenged me to a competition. And uh, he says uh, all he wanted to do was pick the spot. I says, well, I'll just pick the time. Give me four hours. He says, fine. So he picked a spot that had uh, was 80 feet to the top of the reef. And he was chuckling. But what he didn't realize is that he could only use about uh, 30 to 35 minutes worth of air, and I could die for four hours. So consequently, I beat him, by, beat him with over 100 pounds of fish. What kind of gun did you use when you were spear fishing? Uh, strictly rubber powered. I made my own rubbers. I uh, had Charlie Steergill make my shafts and my points and uh, my stringers. and. All my et cetera equipment. Very, very, very famous man, Charlie Sturgill. Okay. Well, again, I want to thank you for uh, narrating this film and uh, giving us a little insight into what uh, uh, spear fishing was like back in uh, uh, the old days. Uh, we call it the old days now, but uh, <laughs> it just probably just seems like a little while. How old are you, by the way, Dell? Uh, right now I'm 70 years old. No, you're not 70 years old. I'm 70 years old. No, you're not. You're 70 years young. No, I'm 70 years young. Well, I got a few good dives left in me. Yeah. <laughs> you okay. know, the, the problem is it's hard for me to get down to 60 feet anymore. Oh, is that so? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ola. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome, Dennis.